Well, we're standing underneath Falcor 2 in a dry dock. And this dry dock allows us to bring the ship out of the water and access a part of the ship that you hardly ever get to see. I want to show you something in particular that's quite interesting. Follow me. So inside this room, this protected structure that's underneath the ship, is something called a gondola. And a gondola is this large appendage that is made of steel that we're going to affix or weld to the bottom of the hull. So the gondola that we have that's been installed has got the latest range of sonars and technology on it. We can basically create a full slice from the ship through the water column into the sediment like a cake, like a layered cake. What's unique about this gondola is it's 19 meters long, it weighs 32 tons, and it's one of the largest of its type. We're gonna fill this steel structure with sonars and other science uh, data collecting equipment that will allow us to study the entire ocean, all the way down to 11,000 meters, the deepest part of the ocean, and even beyond, hundreds of meters into the seafloor. Well, what we're looking at, these holes and these pipes that are underneath the ship here, that we've cut and they're coming through the keel, this is where all the cables and the wires are going to be passed through from inside the ship, from the sonar room, and they're going to be passed down through the hull and then into the gondola structure here and attached to all the sonars, all the data collecting systems that are inside this structure in order for us to operate the equipment, I collect the data, make adjustments. We have different types of systems, some that give us depth information and with them you can create a 3D image of what the seabed looks like. Some that look at the water column and go into the sediment, penetrate other through the seabed and give us information about the, the layering of the structure of the seabed. But we also have lots of empty spaces, spare spaces designed for more and different echo sounder systems, but also for whatever in five, ten years' time uh, technology will evolve to. So we have spare capacity that allows us to always stay at the forefront of, of science and technology.